I'm Karen Sharkey from the William Tracy Group and I'm going to be talking you through the basic principles of managing waste and resources in the construction industry in order to get the best results for your site. Firstly, we need to address what waste actually is. At the William Tracy Group, we no longer like to talk about waste because we treat the materials you dispose of as valuable resources. For example, instead of putting broken pallets into landfill, we would repair them and sell them on as reconditioned pallets. Or if they can't be repaired, we would chip them to create a biomass material which will go on to be used as a fuel to generate energy. We would also take brick and rubble and reprocess them through a wash plant which grinds them down to create an aggregate material which can be sold for use in pipe bedding. It is important that you also adopt this attitude to waste, treating it as something with a value and that means segregating it. Segregating waste allows it to be treated as a resource and will dramatically reduce the cost of each skip. Your general waste skip should be your absolute last resort for disposal. Now, let's get started. Reduce, reuse and recycle within the construction industry. Let's start by talking you through Scotland's Zero Waste Plan, why we need to segregate and what facilities do you have in place which will allow you to do so. What are your responsibilities as individuals and what we are asking you to do. In early May 2012, the Scottish Parliament passed new waste legislation this has set a target for recycling 70% of waste and landfilling only 5% of waste by 2025. The construction industry have committed to halving their waste to landfill. Scotland produces large quantities of waste. Almost 20 million tonnes of waste were produced in 2008. Of that, the construction industry generated 8.2 million tonnes. Householders generated 2.9 million tonnes and the commercial and industrial sector generated 7.9 million tonnes. Zero waste doesn't mean we never throw anything away, but that we make the most effective use of all resources. The first step in the waste hierarchy is prevention. It is always better to prevent a material from being wasted in the first place. If this is not possible, then the next stage is to prepare for reuse, some examples of which are on the next slide. The third step is to recycle, which again some examples of which will follow. The fourth step in the waste hierarchy is to recover other value, for example energy, and the last step and very last resort is disposal and ultimately landfill. Some examples of waste materials which are suitable for reuse are detailed on this slide. Rubble and subsoils can be used as backfill or for haul roads. Timber and plasterboard offcuts can be used for bulkheads or radiator pads. Pallets can be used time and time again and damaged doors and facing brick can be used as temporary doors or structures and substructure. Always use reclaimed material where possible. Why is there a need to segregate waste? There are three key factors which drive us to waste segregation. These are to improve our environment, save money and to improve our company image. The environmental benefits of segregating waste are that together we can help Scotland to achieve and exceed its zero waste targets and also the materials can then be recovered for reuse which means that there is less of a requirement for natural resources. Segregating its source means less energy is used in separating materials at the materials recycling facility and can also mean better scores for your area in the weekly inspection and monthly environmental audit. The rising cost of landfill tax means that general waste skips are very expensive to dispose of. The more we recycle, the less landfill tax we need to pay. Waste should be seen as a valuable resource. Most wastes have a value, such as scrap metal. If we segregate materials, the suppliers can buy the materials back from us. General waste refers to waste classified as non-hazardous and can be defined as waste that does not pose an immediate threat to man or the environment. It generally contains waste which, if separated, could contain some value. I have an example here of a typical 10 tonne active waste skip, which would typically have a disposal cost of around £880. But if you look at the raw material value of the materials placed within the skip, the true cost of this skip is far more than £880. To buy in these raw materials, it would cost around £857. Therefore, the true cost of disposing of this skip is more like £1,737. If these materials were segregated prior to being placed into the skips or containers, there is a potential saving of around £443 per skip. Some examples of the financial benefit are detailed on the next few slides. The first example I have is for plasterboard or gypsum. 
Segregated gypsum currently costs in the region of 4 to 5 50 per tonne to dispose of, whereas if any other waste material is placed in the same skipper container, the entire container then becomes active waste, which is charged at around £88 per tonne. This shows a significant saving per tonne, and gypsum is a large stream within the construction industry, so you can imagine the overall saving per site. The second example I have is for timber waste. Segregated timber currently costs in the region of £7 per tonne to dispose of, and again, if any other waste material is placed in the same skipper container, the entire container then becomes active waste, which is charged at around £88 per tonne to dispose of. This is a huge saving per tonne, and by segregating or recycling this stream, it will have a massive saving both financially and environmentally. Image and reputation. Our customers are becoming increasingly aware of the environment and expect us to be environmentally responsible. Doing this will result in winning repeat business and new customers, securing future business and employment. It will also help us to win awards which will enhance our reputation further. What waste facilities do you have on site? Different sites have different requirements, but you should be able to find some sort of container for any of the following streams. Wood, metal, plastic, cardboard, gypsum, general, inert, brick rubble and soil, aerosols, batteries, oily rags, asbestos and green waste. They may not all be in the same shape or form, but you would expect to see some of these container types on and around your site. You would generally see an open, rolling off container on site for mixed general waste, inert waste, or gypsum or timber waste. Closed skips are usually for the likes of asbestos or anything which could be harmful or have a value in it. Things like aerosols and oily rags are usually stored within 4 to 5 gallon drums. REL, FEL type containers are usually for mixed general waste or recycled material, generally from office buildings. Smaller open skips are usually used for general construction waste or scrap metal, although the bin types are tailored to each individual site and its requirements. The office recycling bins will be found in the site huts or recreation huts and are used for paper, card, plastic bottles and aluminium cans. Always remember these five key points. Always find and use the correct skip. Use the general waste skip as a very last resort. Skips should be clearly signed and labelled. Squash things down or flatten them to maximise payload. And speak to your foreman if you have any ideas as you are at the forefront of the operation and are handling waste on a daily basis. Waste is a serious business. Never burn or bury waste on site, it is illegal. Collecting waste in a pile in the ground can be classed as an offence. Only waste generated from the site is permitted in the skips. Waste from home must go to your local tip. Pallets can go back to the supplier, so try to keep them in good condition and store them separately for collection. Why do we need reminding? Together we can help our companies to reduce costs in landfill, transportation and tax, along with reducing our environmental impact and improving housekeeping and stock control on site. By segregating efficiently, we improve performance analysis and promote green values, which in turn will increase profitability and will help secure future business and allow us to have a continued focus on improvement. So, you should now have a good understanding of the waste management plan on your site. When you get to work, it's easy to quickly forget how important segregating is. So try to remember, even small actions can have a very considerable impact on the financial and environmental cost of a skip. Don't be the one to let the side down. Keep the waste hierarchy at the front of your mind and you will be helping Scotland and the construction industry to meet its recycling targets. And remember, if you have any ideas for improvements to the waste management plan on your site, speak to your foreman. Good luck and thanks for listening.